Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about Scream number three and four, which are out in the graphic novel now that you can buy in comic shops. So please go pick it up because that's the whole point of kind of Scream Week. And I do need to make an addendum here. It seems that because I was only on Twitter a little bit during my last like couple weeks of Twitter, and I remember the last one of the last things I saw was our friend Allie at Let's Talk Scream. I saw her posting that she wanted to do something about Scream Week, and I didn't know if it was her. I assumed it was her idea because obviously I know she's a big Scream fan, but apparently it was like a joint effort between her and uh, uh, you know another Twitter account called Scream of Carnage. And so they were nice enough to email me and say, hey, you know, there's actually uh, something uh, that you got wrong in your last video. Like, you know, there, uh, we actually worked on that together, me and Allie. And so I was like, oh, okay, no problem. Like, I have no problem mentioning you guys. So I did write Allie and I was like, hey, is this is this right? Because I, I don't know, I'm not on Twitter anymore. And she's like, yep, that's true. We worked on it together. So I was like, all right. So I guess uh, Scream of Carnage and Let's Talk, uh, you know, Scream, those two accounts on Twitter, uh, one of them run by Allie, obviously, they worked out something to where like every day for a week they've been doing different things like memes and things like that you know their favorite scream artist their favorite scream host or something like that so they're going way above and beyond than what i'm doing here so i do want to just mention that they have efforts out there that they're doing to try to you know shake things up and get more notice on there there's also a change.org thing i forgot to mention in my last scream video so um now that we're you know past the hospital stuff this week and i'm like rested and i got energy again uh you know so i want to make sure i mention all this stuff so the links to Allie's Let's Talk Scream account will be down below. Her YouTube channel will be down below. Scream of Carnage's Twitter account link will be down below. And I did go back and add that to the description box of the first video I made um, is their account. But then also I'll put the change.org link down below too. So make sure you go sign it, make some noise on Twitter, follow those two accounts uh, and make sure you tag them and tag you know uh, anyone else you wanna tag to try to spread awareness for the revival of Scream. And I think all of us just really want at least one more story with Scream to kind of wrap up what you know Clay Chapman is trying to do with his run, along with Gary Brown, who's one of the artists, and Chris Mooneyham, um, who's the other artist. The three of them ha clearly had some kind of uh, you know final story, or at least one more story to tell with Demogoblin, uh, you know the the resurrected Shriek, I guess, and now she's a Demogoblin instead of Demo Goblin, and clearly there was something that they're leading to there. And, uh, and they never got a chance to do it. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, please go support their efforts. You know, follow them on Twitter, all the links down below. Make sure you follow them and help them out and help scream for scream, right? Uh, so now that I said all that and got all that, uh, you know, properly, uh, you know, out there and got all the right information out there, let's talk about issues three and four because we're talking about more than just issues three and four today of this book. Actually, we're actually going to go back to 2001 and talk about two issues of Captain Marvel, uh, issues 20 and 21 of Captain Marvel from the 2001 run that was written by Peter David with art by Criss Cross. So we're going to talk about all of this a little bit today. But first, let me kind of tell you my feelings on number three and four of Scream, which overall I really liked. You know, I think issue four started to slow things down a little bit for me to have a little bit of criticism there. Uh, when I was rereading it, I was like, wow, there's a lot of Scream just going, um, you know, you're not my mother, and then being like, you know, hit a little bit, you know, hit or beat up a little bit by um, the, the Grendel's mother. And then two pages later, you know, she's like, you're not my mother, you're not my family, you know, and so there was a little bit of repeat there that, you know, I didn't feel like was really pushing the story. I felt like, you know, maybe they could have cut issues one through five down to four issues based on the repetitiveness of issue four. Um, but I haven't read reread five yet, so I don't really know. But it, clearly they're setting up something with Thor in it with some flashbacks, so we'll talk about all that. But that's really my only ne negative criticism, so I wanted to start off you know, with that so we can get into the positives. Because again, I feel like they're doing a lot of great stuff. They have uh, Detective Henley, who's the police officer from the first issue, is now coming in to feast to question Andy, because Andy was attacked along with you know Aunt May and everybody else from the you know the possessed Agnes and other people, other uh, homeless people that have been possessed by this mother character. So now Andy's been attacked and she's fighting back. She's like, you know, in this issue, she's like, you know what? They came after me. They started the attack and they were sent by some creature from the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of the Hudson or whatever, you know, they, wherever the, uh, the, that part of body of water is in New York, whichever. Because I can't remember where they say it's happening. It's just over, you know, by the George Washington Bridge. And I don't know enough about New York to really know if that's the George Washington Bridge or if it's another bridge. So, so I don't really know. <laughs> so Andy basically is like, all right, they came after me. 
She tells Detective Henley, I don't, I, you know, I don't know how to explain what happened to me, but luckily for her, one of the, kind of luckily for her, one of the bodies gets back up and attacks them again. So now Detective Henley sees exactly what they're up against. So, you know, again, Detective Henley and his partner, I was kind of hoping, you know, the series would continue because I think they're interesting characters to have with Andy. So clearly, you know, Clay Chapman was building that supporting cast. We have two detectives. Uh, we have Aunt May. We had Agnes, who's now been infected. We have Andy, you know, uh, having flashbacks of, um, you know, Flash Thompson and her father. But then now that they're both dead, she's looking for some kind of connection out there and maybe her mother's still out there somewhere. So the the mother of Grendel is playing off of that too. And then the mother of Grendel also has taken a liking to the Scream symbiote in general because of its ability to survive and what it's been through and how it kind of was, you know, taken from Venom as a seed and birthed in the lab, you know, kind of, you know, by the Life Foundation. So it, it, it has a special interest in Scream. Um, and has claimed her as one of her children. You know, the mother has like, no, you're one of my children. And, you know, of course, Scream's like, no, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm my own thing. And, uh, you know, one thing I would have liked to see a little bit more in this book is the multiple voices inside Scream's head, because there is Patricia Robertson's kind of in there somewhere, or at least her memories are. Um, and then also you have uh, the memories of uh, Donna Diego kind of floating around in there. And that's just one of those things I feel like every writer, when they come on to Venom, like Donnie Cates is addressing that by retconning memories, which I don't like at all. Um, and in this one, they're just, they're playing with um, Andy's memories, but I would have liked to see more of like, you know, Andy has two other women's memories in her mind. That would have been neat to see, you know, her um, have a nightmare and it was a, a, a Donna Diego memory um, or have a, you know, a, you know, Patricia Robertson memory or something like that. I don't know. I just, I, that's something I guess I personally would play with in that uh, regard uh, in this universe of this book, but maybe that was something Clay planned to get to and just never could because now the book's canceled, unfortunately. So, um, but there is some back and forth between Scream and, um, and, and Andy at least. So it shows that relationship is building. So she does have a relationship with her symbiote and they are very codependent on each other. And they kind of are pushing away these mother figures that are trying to return in their life. They're kind of resistant against it. And it, it's kind of neat actually. So, um, so I like that. I like that they're playing more on that in issue three here. And that's where, like I said, Andy, she, now that she's been attacked and then now that the police see exactly what's going on, Andy's like, you know, the, the cop or Detective Henley's like, I guess I, guess I have no more questions for you because now I saw what attacked you. Um, and Andy was like, yeah. And, you know, she was able to grab one uh, or the Detective Henley or someone grabbed it, threw it down and the parasite that was in it crawled out and it went back, you know, and that's where Scream followed it back to, you know, the, the, the Hudson or whatever. So Andy's like, all right, now that it's attacked me, I'm going to dive into the water here and bring the fight to whatever the hell this thing is. So that's pretty much the rest of issues three and four is Andy dives into the water. She finds this like boat, sunken boat down there. There's all these dead bodies. They've been reanimated. Um, the mother is there. She talks about her connection to Noel and her connection to Beowulf and also the Grendel. And she reveals that Beowulf is now called Thor. So I guess they're kind of trying to tie that uh, continuity together. And uh, and so, and I think that might've been something Jason Aaron did too, I can't remember, because I, I don't remember all of Jason Aaron's Thor runs, so I, I can't fully remember everything, but I did read that run uh, years ago. Um, and I just, I, I can't remember, unfortunately. Uh, but the Grendel's mother, apparently she was a character that did exist in Marvel continuity before. So when Andy goes down there, she fights the mother, they get into a big battle. Um, and then, you know, of course, that's when we do this back and forth for like the last few pages of issue three and most of issue four is just mother grabbing Andy, pulling the Scream symbiote off her, the Scream symbiote getting back to Andy. Andy now has Scream looking at mother and going, you're not our mother. And then once again gets grabbed, symbiote peeled off, they re they bond again and then the other uh creatures down there attack and she's like you're not my family and then she looks at mother and you're not my mother and then gets grabbed again and then gets pulled off and then i think at the end of issue four uh mother tries to eat andy and then that's the last we see of andy for this issue of course we have issues five and six coming up and i also want to make a correction Apparently issues one through six are all in the trade paperback. So I'm glad Marvel did that because I, I was thinking six didn't make the cut. You know, I was thinking, oh man, that because originally in Comixology, they said just issues one through five were going to be in this trade. 
Apparently, it's actually they added issue six to it before they went to print, which is great. So that way you can get the whole screen run at least uh, without missing issue six. So, um, so that's and now I'm even more happy that I broke these up into two episode arcs, uh, you know, or episode, you know, two uh, issue episodes, I guess, because uh, because now we can talk about issues five and six in the next episode. And it makes sense to do that because they're both in the trade paperback. So again, before we get into major spoilers in the next episode and any more in this one, please go get the trade. Like, just go get it. It's out there now. It's cheap. It's under 20 bucks and you get six issues in it. It's a great deal. I think on even on Comixology, it's like 10 bucks or something like that. So uh, yeah, you can't beat that. It's a, it's a good price. So um, anyway, so now back to the book. We I, Like I said, I think issue four ends with Andy being separated from the suit for the, I think, second or third, probably I think the third time in the span of those two issues. And then she gets swallowed by the mother. But meanwhile, the mother is um, telling this story about the Grendel and how the Grendel attacked, you know, on Earth, uh, that she is the mother of the Grendel, uh, essentially, I guess. And so it's weird because when Noel opened his hand and did the Noah thing where there's like a, a red dragon and a black dragon went out, um, it seemed like he created them both at the same time. So I don't know how she can claim she's the mother but then i guess that ties into previous marvel continuity which we're going to talk about here in a second um but uh so yeah so i was like well i'm, I'm kind of confused they look like they were created at the same time but uh but whatever i guess it, that's just me, me being nit, kind of nitpicky so um so she she tells the story about how thor at that time i guess known as beowulf uh you know killed her son the grendel and you know and knocked him you know buried him in the ice or whatever it was when they fought and then she decided to attack um, you know, to get revenge, and then Thor kind of wounded her, and then it looks like they're setting up for a rematch in the flashbacks, because at the end of this uh, fourth issue, Thor is, like, walking through a cave looking for Grendel's mother, um, so I guess that might pick up in the next issue, so like I said, I haven't reread five. Six is more closer in my mind, because when that came out, I bought it the day it came out for full price uh, on Comixology, and read it, like, twice, because it had Punisher and Salmon in it, so that issue I remember pretty clearly, but these other ones, um, you know, I, I'm glad I'm rereading them. So, uh, but I don't re remember how this story wraps up, so we'll get there in the next issue. Um, so anyway, during this time when she's talking about the flashbacks and she's talking about Thor, you know, uh, defeating her and stuff before, she mentions that, or they mention in like an addendum, like the editor says, um, actually, because uh, she says, oh, when I awoke, um, you know, I've been awake for, you know, so many years now, and she's like, so when I awoke, uh, you know, that's when I've been laying down here in the bottom of the ocean and I've been, you know, uh, uh, planning for Noel's return. And now that he's coming back, he's going to, you know, I'm sure he'll be, you know, reward me with something, but he's going to kill you, Scream. So I want you to side with me, be my child, and maybe he'll spare you. Maybe Noel will spare you because he's going to come here and eviscerate all existing symbiotes and hosts and everything. And, uh, and so if you want a chance to survive give up your host and just come to me. And so she's trying to create a divide between Andy and the symbiote, but it's not working. They, they're very codependent on each other and very much like being uh, bonded to each other or, the, or that relationship is growing. Uh, but in, the, in issue four, they decide, no, we're going to try to stay together, but then they get ripped apart one more time. So we'll see how that pans out in issue five. Um, but they mention Captain Marvel issue 20. So, the, it, so this is where I'm a little confused on the writing of this book. They mention, okay, in issue 20 of Captain Marvel, which came out in 2001, uh, the Grendel's mother was awakened. So I actually went back, I found on Comixology issue 20 and 21 of Captain Marvel because it's a two-part story with the Grendel's mother. She looks exactly the same as, as she does in this book. So I was totally blown away. I did not know this character existed before. I never read, uh, I read the death of Captain Marvel um, in, back in the like 80s, I think it was. Um, but the, I've never really read Captain Marvel books after that. Um, guy or girl or Monica, like doesn't matter which host it was. Like I just never really got into the Captain Marvel character because I always associated that with the Avengers and I was never an Avengers kid. I was a Spider-Man and X-Men kid um, and, and teenager and adult growing up. So I never really dipped too much into that side of the Marvel Universe. So I'm kind of dumb and ignorant to a lot of that stuff. Um, even, even recently, I think uh, Eddie's Mullet and I we're talking about Black Knight, and I'm like, I don't know anything about Black Knight because he was saying that Black Knight has a special sword called the Ebony Blade or something that might somehow tie into Null. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, I have pockets of the Marvel Universe where I am completely dumb to it. Same with DC. I mean, there, it's fewer in DC, but definitely there's pockets where I'm like, I don't know what that is. So, uh, so when I was reading this, I was like, oh, let's go back on Comicsology. Let's find those two issues and read them. So in those two issues, we have the, the mother waking up, being summoned by Merlin, 
uh, and Merlin, you know, summons this creature and then says, do my bidding. And then she's like, well, I don't, you know, no, you don't summon me to do your bidding. Uh, and they say like, oh, she was defeated at one point. She's been, you know, uh, lost or buried at some, you know, so I guess he, so they're taking that loose continuity and fleshing that out. And I got to say, congrats, you know, like, uh, I don't know if that was a Donny Cates thing or a Clay Chapman thing or something they worked out together. Um, I don't know who went back. I know Tom Brevoort was one of the editors on that uh, Captain Marvel book. So I don't know if Tom Brevoort talked to these guys in a room and said, hey, why don't you use this character that we, you know, oh, Grendel's mother, we actually have a character like that, you know. I don't know. Like, I don't know how that came about, but I'd love to hear that story, actually, because that is such an obscure reference taking, uh, you know, from, from the great Peter David, who is one of my favorite writers and does the symbiote Spider-Man stuff currently with Greg Land um, and Criss Cross, who's a fantastic artist. Um, and I think Criss Cross did some of the Slingers books, too, I think, maybe when I was uh, younger. So I'm um, big fan of both these guys. So when I saw that they there was a reference to that I had to go get those issues. So when I did, I was happy. I read those uh, issues 20 and 21 and you get to see mother in it. She's attacking these people in a comic shop. And it's funny too, because they actually reference golden apple comics uh, later in the uh, issue 21. At the very end, there's a, a, a panel I'll try to put up on screen there that says golden orange comics. <laughs> so clearly referencing golden apple right there. Um, and I was like, that's crazy. Like how all this kind of circular, like I used to work at golden apple. They gave me my going away party, their family to me, you know, every, the Leibowitz family. And uh, it's just, I was like, this is so crazy. Um, and then also that this Grendel's mother character wasn't a pre-existing character. I had no idea about. Um, so that just made me love uh, the amount of work that Clay is putting into this and the artists are putting into this because they kept her design the same and everything. She's got the little face on top. Um, she's red, you know, she's got like the long hair and I thought it was cool. I was just like, hey, that's neat because um, I, it just makes me like this book more. You know me, if I, if people can go back and grab old, you know, uh, you know, references and old continuity and make something of it now, I think that's great. And, and I think any other writers would have been like, I don't care if there was a Grendel's mother before, we're going to do our version, you know, because no, no one's probably read that book anyway. And I'm glad that they were like, no, someone has read that book and we're going to pick up on those threads and we're going to bring her back and do this. So at the end of this, uh, at the 20 and 21 of Captain Marvel, I think the, Gren uh, the Grendel's mother, she, she walks away from Merlin. She's like, I'm not going to let you you know, I'm not your puppet. I serve something else or whatever, or I'm, I'm served myself. So she leaves and then she ends up meeting like a, a guy in Hollywood who's like a, a wrestling promoter and or something. And he's like, and so he's on TV going, this is our next wrestler. And, you know, and, and, uh, and then, you know, I think Grendel's mother goes, I'm going to eat my opponents alive or something like that. So I don't know if she ever popped up again in the comics, but it was kind of like a tongue in cheeky kind of ending. And like I said, they had the golden orange uh, comics, golden apple reference. And I was like, yeah, that's neat. It's just cool stuff. See her, see her in action from, you know, uh, almost two decades ago. And then now, you know, seeing her in this book today, I was like, hey, kudos to you guys at Marvel for pulling all that together and making that work. I was like, that's neat. So, yeah, they, there was a pre-existing Grendel's mother character. They brought her back and they just said, uh, yeah, I guess she got pulled out by Merlin and then, I, and then I don't know, but here's where the continuity kind of messes with me because they they show in flashbacks that Thor beats her a, at one point and sent her to the bottom of the ocean, and she's been waiting there this whole time. So I'm like, well, you reference something that showed her get summoned out of her exile, um, but now you're saying she's been there the whole time. So I don't know. Again, a nitpicky thing, and it's not really. It, it didn't ruin the story for me, but it did make me go. Oh, but who knows? Maybe I have to read the next issue to see kind of how that continuity in the flashbacks line up. Because clearly there's got to be more flashbacks because the end of this uh, issue four here was just Thor going into a cave. And I'm like, what happens? What happens? So I imagine we're going to see a rematch between him and Grendel's mother at the in the next issue probably. So I'm excited. You know, I'm excited to keep reading. And I want to thank Allie and uh, Scream of Carnage account, Let's Talk Scream account for Allie. Um, I want to thank both of you for having this effort of pushing this book, trying to get the, you know, it noticed more, you know, get people talking about it more. And, you know, hopefully my three videos here contribute in some way. I know I'm not going to the levels that you are going to, but hopefully, you know, people are still watching these videos. Hopefully they check out your links down below and check out the change.org and sign it. Like, please do guys. I know I already made videos on that in the past, but I'm, I'm urging you again, and I'll mention it in the next video too, for sure. Um, but if you've read, uh, you know, number three and four, I was going to say of Captain Marvel, but of Scream, if you've read issues three and four, let me know your thoughts down below. And have you read Captain Marvel 20 and 21 by Peter David and Chris Cross? Let me know that down below too. And if you haven't, check it out. It's kind of fun. Uh, 
I, you know, I, I put up some images I know on, on uh, screen there, but it's, it's actually a fun little two, uh, two part story that uh, was like, Hey, this is neat. It, it kind of made me appreciate more what they're doing in issue four here. So yeah, like I said, in the beginning, a couple little nitpicks of issue four about the repetitiveness of you're not my mother, you're not my mother, but you know, it still didn't hurt my overall enjoyment of these two issues. And I got to say, like, you know, please go out there, pick up the trade paperback, has issues one through six in it. That's really what we're trying to do is trying to make sure that trade paperback sells well in print form or in digital form. We just want it to sell really well because hopefully that'll send a message to Marvel that this book needs to at least get, you know, a couple more issues or at least a wrap up, ch a chance to wrap up, like maybe a 48 page Web of Venom one shot. That would be great too, just so we can wrap up the Scream stuff with Demogoblin before we lead into King and in Black. I think it's probably too late to do that now, um, but uh, hopefully at some point down the line they can do something. Or maybe, you know, they bring Clay Chapman in to write a tie into King and in Black that, you know, has that kind of story wrapped up and sets up Scream for King and Black. So, I don't know. I hope they work on something. Uh, but anyway, let me know your thoughts, your ideas, anything like that down below. Let me know if you picked up the trade already of Scream. If you have, I'd love to know just what your thoughts are in general for the first four issues. Save your thoughts for issues five and six for my next video because I don't want to spoil too much. Hopefully you guys go out there and buy this book now and I'll probably wait another couple days to record my reviews of five and six and then I'll post that you know, sometime in the middle of next week so that way um, that comes you know, around maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll post that video. And so that way, you know, you that week on Wednesday, if you haven't gotten the trade from, you know, this past week, you can go out and buy the trade when you pick up your new comics on Wednesday. So, uh, so that's what I'll do. I'll try to plan it for like a Tuesday upload. So uh, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything. I appreciate the support. Please go support Allie. Please support Scream of Carnage and go sign the, the change.org and follow Clay Chapman and Gary Brown and Chris Mooneyham, everyone on Twitter, follow them and support their work and see where they go next because I'm sure whatever books they get sent to next are going to be awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.